everyone, welcome to my ninth and final update for my Doctor Who rewatch. For those of you who don't know, I have rewatched the entire Doctor Who series from the 2006 season one to season nine. And in case you missed any of my previous updates, you can find all the links in the description. So I'm gonna be sharing some of my thoughts and experience watching season nine. So spoiler alert if you haven't seen season nine. We're starting season nine with a Christmas episode called Last Christmas. And it's in this episode that Clara and the Doctor finally tell each other that they lied about him finding Gallifrey and her about Danny. I mean, it's sad, but at the same time, I'm like, finally, they're back together. And then my favorite moment of the episode was Clara asking her doctor, doctor, am I young? And he's like, no idea. I love that he didn't really notice any difference in Clara, whether she was old or young. Another fun thing about the episode is that um, the actress who plays the waif in Game of Thrones, Faye Marseille, actually plays a character in the episode and when she gets back home on her list of things to do, she has Thrones Marathon, which I'm guessing is for Game of Thrones Marathon because at the time, Game of Thrones was already on the air, but I think it was before she was actually in the show, which I'm like, that's that's pretty funny, actually. And then we move on to episode one of the season of Magician's Apprentice, where we meet Davros, creator of the Daleks, who is dying and is asking for the doctor to come and talk to him. And Missy is back as well. Hey, Missy, you're so fun, you're so fun, you blow my mind, hey, Missy. And then we get episode two, The Witch is Familiar, which, she, which is the second part of that story where Missy puts Clara in a Dalek, which I think is such a fascinating uh, moment because you actually see how twisted being in a Dalek actually makes everything you say. Because when she says her name, it comes out as Dalek. And when she says to the doctor, I love you, it says exterminate, exterminate. And the only thing that clues the doctor into um, that maybe something's off is that the Dalek says mercy. And he's like, well, how, how would a Dalek know about mercy, which is then you get the scene where he eventually goes to save Davros as a kid and shows him mercy. And that's how it has been put into the Daleks, the concept of mercy. Episode five, The Girl Who Died, for me is the beginning of where this season took a t uh, turn for the better, where you got some of the best episodes, I think, because this is where we meet a shilder for the first time. And that whole storyline throughout the season, I think, was so amazing. Obviously, Maisie Williams was such a great casting for this. And uh, in this episode, we also get quite a few great moments, including the doctor explaining that premonitions is really just remembering in the wrong direction, which I was like, hmm, I've thought about that that way. And then the doctor explaining that immortality means watching everybody else die. And the reason why he gave the repair kit to a shelter is that one day she might meet someone that she just can't bear to lose, which is really sad actually. Moving on to episode six, the woman who lived. And this is where we see the big transformation of a shelter who is now me. And at this point she has lived 800 years. So you can imagine what kind of big transformation she has had. And I think something that I haven't really seen in other shows necessarily when it comes to immortality, or at least I don't remember it being this clearly addressed, is the fact that she doesn't remember everything about her past and she actually has to keep, uh, you know, diaries. She has books and books and books of, of uh, writings of everything that has happened to her over the years. And you know, the internet didn't exist at the time. So she has like this huge library and I keep thinking, well, if it burns down, you know, that's gonna suck. And also to transport it along with you when you have to move, it must suck as well. But that's the only way she can remember her past. And it makes total sense because I, I have a hard time remembering things that I did like 10 years ago. So I'm like, can you imagine like remembering things you did like 200 years ago? I also really like the fact that, uh, you know, me wants to travel with a doctor, but he doesn't think that they would be very good to each other. Because when you live as long as they have, they forget what really matters. And I think that it would be a bad balance to each other. And I think it's true in a way, maybe the reason, one of the reasons why the doctor takes on a companion is every time it's like magical for them. And maybe he's getting a little blase of it all, but every time you have a new companion being like, oh, it's bigger on the inside, or they have their own experience of what he does and maybe gives him a new perspective, a new love for what he does, a new 
youth, you know, in a way. And me would probably not do this because they would just keep on living and living and then get blase together and just be like, eh. Moving on to episode 10, Face the Raven, which was such a heartbreaking episode. It's also the episode in which Clara dies or sacrifices herself for her friend. And I don't remember being as emotional. I mean, I was pretty emotional. I mean, I was pretty sad the first time I watched this episode, but I think in rewatching this series, I've come to really love Clara a lot more than I did the first time that I had watched her as a companion. And this time around really, really hurt badly. And you know when she takes that clock from Rigsy, you're like, no, Clara, it's just, you're just not gonna be able to take it off. You're gonna die, no. And when she accepts the fact that she's gonna die, you know, and she just bring, brings up, you know, Danny again, if, if Danny Pink can do it, so can I, and and to me, seeing it kind of back to back like this, you can tell that Clara is never the same again after losing Danny, which it's heartbreaking, you know? And that leads to one of my favorite uh, moments between Clara and the doctor when she's telling him, I wrote down the quote so I could read it back. Um, she says, you're gonna be alone now and you're very bad at that. You're gonna be furious and you're gonna be sad, but listen to me, don't let this change you. Promise me be a doctor. You will not insult my memory. I will die and no one else here or anywhere will suffer. And this is how you know that Clara really understands the doctor and they've gotten to a point where she's traveled with him so much and she knows and she doesn't want him to go into this dark hole that he sometimes goes into when, pe when people that he loves die. And the performance from Jenna Coleman in this is just fantastic. I mean, she's, yeah, I, tears, so many tears. And then of course, before the doctor is uh, able to say anything, she tells him everything you're about to say, I already know. Oh! And then you realize that Clara was really saving me from the doctor because she knew he was gonna be very angry at her. And this leads us to episode 11, Heaven Sent. One of the best Doctor Who episodes, in my opinion, ever. Where the doctor is stuck in the confessional for 4.5 billion years. And the way the episode is structured is so fantastic because you're not really understanding what's happening for quite some time. And then you're living the story as if it's the first time that it's happening because obviously the doctor thinks it's the first time it's happening to him. But really at this point, he's already been there for quite some time. And then when you realize, it just breaks your heart when you realize what's really happening to him that every time he dies and he comes back and then he punches that rock to make a hole to escape every day. And for 4.5 billion years. And I think it's in that, in that last moment when he understands how long it's been because he obviously sees how much he's been punching uh, the hole. And also all the skulls that you see in the water, it's all him every time. So when you see all these skulls, you're like, wow, the doctor died quite a few times. I guess in a way it's a blessing that he doesn't really remember that he's been here for that long, but that, episode really, really touched me. It's just fantastic writing, fantastic performance. And on top of everything, I love that he tells this story. Every time he punches through, I think it's called the Spantium, which is 400 times harder than diamond. And it's 20 feet thick. Like what the hell, this is insane. So every time he punches it, he starts telling the story. And so the story goes, and the shepherd boy says, there's this mountain of pure diamond. It takes an hour to climb it and an hour to go around it. Every hundred years, a little bird comes. It sharpens its beak on the diamond mountain. And when the entire mountain is chiseled away, the first second in eternity will have passed. You must think that's a hell of a long time. Personally, I think that's a hell of a bird. So pretty much the doctor is a bird. She's a little, the little diamond away, or the spentium, which is even harder than diamond. 400 times harder! Ah, I can't stop talking about this episode just because it's just crazy. But then of course we have to move on because he eventually does escape the confession dial and we get to episode 12, Hell Bent. 
And this is the episode where the doctor brings back Clara to life, or at least kind of steals her in time one moment before she dies, freezing her in time because he just can't bear to lose her. Of course, we have another great moment between Clara and the doctor and where she doesn't want him to wipe her memory. And then in the end, it actually ends up being him who forgets her. We understand now what the whole diner is about with her being the wait waitress in a diner, which is actually a new TARDIS. And she kind of sends the doctor on his merry way, you know, because she obviously will have to go back to that moment in which she died. So he goes back to his TARDIS and she has left him a beautiful note. Run, you clever boy, and be a doctor. I think the best part is that she obviously has to go back, but she's now with a shielder and they're gonna go on through a few, you know, detours on the way back to the moment of her death, which means she'll probably get to have quite a few adventure with a shelter, which I'm almost like, I wish we could see the adventures of Clara and me in the diner TARDIS. And we end the episode with the doctor having a new screwdriver. What? And last for this season nine, I'll include it here, is the Christmas episode, The Husbands of River Song, which is a really fun episode. Uh, River Song is back. And also I love that this whole time she doesn't realize that he's a doctor because obviously he changed his face since the last time she saw him. And he keeps giving her like hints, I'm the doctor. Hint, hint. And she's like, what's like, Okay, great. Yeah, your doctor, like, fix him. Um, which, you know, at some point I was like, come on, River. Like, how do you not realize that he's a doctor? Like, he keeps keeps hinting at things. But I guess, you know, she's just focused on other things and I guess she's probably not expecting him to be here. But um, this is also the end of River Song because they're going to the Singing Towers on Darillium, which, you know, River Song talks about and Silence of the Library episode from season three. I think the doctor is actually the one who gave the idea of creating the restaurant here, looking at the singing towers, which is pretty cool. And of course, the thing she doesn't know right away is that the night in Darillium lasts 24 years. So the doctor and Rurusong got 24 years together, the last years, and he knows that she's gonna die you know, after this, because obviously she goes to the library and we've already seen what happens in the library. Ironically, it's also the first time that um, he meets her. The first time that the doctor meets her is also the last time that she will see the doctor uh, when she's alive. That's also why he gives her his screwdriver, which we know that he gives it to her for a reason. And Silence of the Library, it all comes together. You're like, ah, I love it. So good. Oh, and also this is the first time that we meet Nardole, which, who's a big part of season 10. I think I'll probably do um, like a review for season 10. Of course, I would love to hear how you like this season of Doctor Who. What were some of your favorite moments? Let me know in the comments. And I cannot wait to be able to talk about Bill because Bill is just such an amazing companion. I literally, I just fell in love with her the first time she was on screen. I'm like, yep, yeah, love her. She's amazing keep her around. Unfortunately, I don't think she's going to be sticking around very much, right? She's leaving after the season, which is so sad. But anyway, we'll talk about that uh, for my review for season 10.